There was something eerie about Don Juan's house. For a moment, I thought he was hiding somewhere around the place to scare me. I called out to him, and then gathered enough nerve to walk inside. Don Juan was not there. I put the two bags of groceries I had brought on a pile of firewood and sat down to wait for him, as I had done dozens of times before. But for the first time in my years of associating with Don Juan, I was afraid to stay alone in his house. I felt a presence, as if someone invisible was there with me. I remembered then that years before, I had the same vague feeling that something unknown was prowling around me when I was alone. I jumped to my feet and ran out of the house. I came back to Don Juan's house hours later, in the early afternoon. He was apparently waiting for me. He came up to me as I got out of my car and examined me with curious eyes. Why the nervousness? I explained that something had scared me off that morning and that I had begun to feel something prowling around me as if in the past. What you felt this morning was the spirit of the waterhole. I've told you that you must be prepared for unexpected encounters with those forces. I thought you understood. I did. Then why the fear? That spirit is on your trail. It already tapped you in the water. I assure you it will tap you again. What should I do? You forget too easily. The path of knowledge is a forced one. In order to learn, we must be spurred. In the path of knowledge, we are always fighting something, avoiding something, prepared for something, and that something is always inexplicable, greater, more powerful than us. The inexplicable forces will come to you. Now, it is the spirit of the waterhole. Later on, it'll be your own ally. So there is nothing you can do now but to prepare yourself for the struggle. The world is indeed full of frightening things, and we are helpless creatures surrounded by forces that are inexplicable and unbending. The average man, in ignorance, believes that those forces can be explained or changed. He doesn't really know how to do that, but he expects that the actions of mankind will explain them or change them sooner or later. The sorcerer, on the other hand, does not think of explaining or changing them. Instead, he learns to use such forces by redirecting himself and adapting to their direction. That's his trick. There is very little to sorcery once you find out its trick. I will repeat this once more. Only as a warrior can one survive the path of knowledge. What helps a sorcerer live a better life is the strength of being a warrior. I personally believe that to be a warrior is more suitable than anything else. Therefore, I have endeavored to show you those forces as a sorcerer perceives them, because only under their terrifying impact can one become a warrior. To see without first being a warrior would make you weak. It would give you false meekness, a desire to retreat. Your body would decay because you would become indifferent. It is my personal commitment to make you a warrior so you won't crumble. I have heard you say time and time again that you are always prepared to die. I don't regard that feeling as necessary. I think it is a useless indulgence. A warrior should be prepared only to battle. I have also heard you say that your parents injured your spirit. I think the spirit of man is something that can be injured very easily, although not by the same acts you yourself call injurious. I believe that your parents did injure you by making you indulgent and soft and given to dwelling. The spirit of the warrior is not geared to indulging and complaining, nor is it geared to winning or losing. The spirit of a warrior is geared only to struggle, and every struggle is a warrior's last battle on earth. Thus, the outcome matters very little to him. In his last battle on earth, a warrior lets his spirit flow free and clear, and he wages his battle knowing that his will is impeccable, and a warrior laughs and laughs.